how to migrate on premises files from on premises to azure data lake using azure data factory hello everyone in this video i am going to cover one important topic on data migration in azure on previous videos i have covered how to configure self hosted integration runtime and uh, few information about a binary format and compression and splitting one file into multiple files so you can go through those videos you will get more clarity on how to configure self hosted integration runtime and on premises to cloud data migration we are going to use a self hosted integration runtime in this video i am going to cover on premises to cloud migration using azure data factory uh, i'm having a windows operating system which i already installed a couple files just i'll delete a few files and i'll keep uh, one or two files to show you one uh, example how to migrate these file from local system to data lake i'm having a tsv file and zip file so first we'll start with the tsv file then we'll move on a zip file so we will understand how to migrate this file from on premises to data lake shant so i'm going to show you that uh, file size so one file uh, which is a tsv file 1.7 gb and the compression file is a 666 mb okay 1.6 gb and 666 mb first we'll go with a uh, 1.6 gb file and then we will understand that i have already installed a self hosted integration runtime in this machine which you can go through my previous videos and even we can verify the status it is a running status and the previous video i did a shared self hosted integration runtime that also you can go through that video then so let's start with a data factory how to create a link service and integration runtime it's already running we can verify that shared integration runtime i already created in a previous video you can go through that it is a running status it's a linked self hosted integration runtime then what we'll do we'll create a link service so to transfer files from on premises to data lake so first uh, i'll edit existing uh, link service which i already created with a uh, uh, different uh, integration runtime i am going to share the change to self hosted integration runtime then check that password and test the connection so i'm going to verify uh, with the new integration runtime which is shared integration runtime i'm trying to connect now connection is successful i'm trying i'm able to connect on premises windows machine so once we are able to connect on premises using link service we can go to author and create a new pipeline so we can go to author and create a new pipeline uh, in that pipeline we can use the activity copy activity in that we can use a data set source data set sync data set and uh, when it comes to creating a new pipeline we can use existing pipeline or we can create a new pipeline so that is always we can decide depends on requirement so i'm going to create a new pipeline and the name you can use any user defined name any user defined name so on premises file to adls gen2 then you can uh, go to activities once we are done with minimize this uh, properties window then we can go to activities uh, copy activity drag and drop this then we need to create a data set a source data set a sync data set so our source is a file select the file system and uh, choose the type as binary so type uh, is binary when we are migrating on premises to data lake always use binary because we are not reading data just we are migrating data as it is from on premises to data lake even structured semi structured unstructured any files if you are migrating just go with binary format so once we are done with the binary format then we can uh, select that particular location where we can uh, pick the file i'll show you one file first then we will go with the multiple files in next video so we'll go with a static file so click on binary format then select a particular file that file uh, uh, is going to connect from on premises right so that self hosted integration runtime which we already created so data set name any data data set name user defined name and uh, link service just now we create we verify the link service now we can select the file from local system i think here the folder location i gave as a files files there are multiple files are available i'll choose the first tsv file it's 1.6 gb yeah this csv file it's 1.6 gb then click on okay 
then we'll create another data set sync data set the sync data set is adls gen2 go to azure data like gen2 again we need to select the binary if source is binary sync should be binary always remember this then provide any name user define name ds adls gen2 binary target you can give any user defined name it should be reasonable name okay and then select the link service select the location where you want to copy this file inside this container data lake container landing i want to copy that file so click on okay and uh, now we can go to data lake this is my data lake gen2 inside that the container name called data lake then folder name uh, landing i want to copy file into this location from on premises to this location so this location is empty so then i'm going to show you that on premises file system where the files are available inside that c drive files is a folder there you can find this tsv file this file size is around 1.6 gb another file also is available uh, 7zip file gz file we'll see that files later okay we'll see those files later one is a uh, 300 mb another one is 600 mb files are available but we will start with the tsv file first then we will understand other file formats then we will understand other file formats so these files uh, different compression algorithms uh, depends on algorithm depends on data then it can do the compression 60 to 90 percent compression ratio so but native format original data file first we will understand then we will see compression file now go to data factory copy activity select a source data set just now we created the data set from file binary then sync data set adls gen2 binary target that also we created now so now we can validate and remember uh, if source is binary sync should be binary if you don't have a binary if you validate it will raise exception saying that sync must be binary if source is binary always remember this so just to, to show you that error i have selected a csv file now we need to select a binary now validate it again no issues now we can debug so debug means it is going to read data from on premises and it will copy into data lake gen2 it will copy into data lake gen2 queued queued means it is trying to connect on premises then we can refresh it will be in progress yeah in progress now we can go to our windows system task manager windows system right click on a task manager and then you can monitor this network so now it is copying file from on premises to data lake gen2 right depends on your network bandwidth maybe 100 mb per second or 120 or 140 it depends on the network bandwidth it will take time data size the file size plus network bandwidth it will take more time if you have more uh, data then less bandwidth then you can go to view then you can see the details it is in uh, in progress on premises files reading uh, size one file it is reading target is data like gen2 it's a us us location then so when we look at uh, basics understanding on compute power over the network when we are processing data over the network so over the network always remember size is matter and bandwidth is matter if you have a 1 gb data if it is 50 mb per second it will take minimum 2.7 minutes if you have a better bandwidth like 100 mb per second it will reduce the time if you have a 200 mb per second it will reduce the time so if you have more data lesser bandwidth it will increase the time so always remember over the network size and bandwidth is matter so you can check with your network team and uh, for better network like infrastructure team on premises infrastructure team then sizes we can decide and uh, best compression algorithm and we can compress the file before moving to cloud so the size also is matter network bandwidth also is matter so what we will do we will compress the file if you have a huge data file on on premises then now almost done the file uh, in progress so minimum it will take uh, two to three minutes because i'm getting a bandwidth 120 140 average like uh, above 100 only so 50 mb per second for 1 gb it will take 2.7 minutes so we are getting uh, above 100 bandwidth right so 1 gb will take one minute average time if you consider 
then uh, 1.6 GB. So nearly 2 to 2.2 minutes or 2.3 minutes. Yeah, now it is done 1.7 GB over the network. Are read and written completed. Total time also you can see 2 minutes 28. So depends on network bandwidth and size. Both are important. Now next what we will do? We will understand with lesser file size. So what will we will go with the same data file with the compression. 7-zip compression and GZ compression. So 7-zip will do better compression than GZ compression. So GZip also will do the compression but lesser compared to 7-zip. Lot of compression algorithms are available that we can decide depends on project requirement now so what we will do next we will understand with the same copy activity we'll go and select a different data file we'll go and select different data file and we'll understand how much time it is going to take how much time it is going to take so open this and select another data file uh, existing data file is 1.6 CB. Now I'm going to select a 7 zip or you can say G zip. First we'll see the G zip around the 666 MB file. Then we'll run the same activity. Now I'm going to debug the same activity. Let's verify how much time it will take. Earlier 1.6 GB file like 1.7 GB file it's taken 2.2 minutes. Now it's a 666 MB file. Let's verify how much time it will take. So in progress now, we can go and verify uh, in a view or we can go to our on-premises box and verify that uh, for the network, how much uh, speed it is going on. That bandwidth also we can monitor and task manager. Okay, just to refresh in progress. So it should not take 2.2 minutes because the data size is less now. So same network, so data size is less, you should reduce the process time. So maybe one to two minutes in between, like 1.5 or 1.6. So now still in copy in progress, like a 120 MB per second. Average it is going like 110 or 120 MB per second it is going. Okay, so above 100 MB per second. So it's a good network only. Now, let's verify, refresh. So almost uh, done, just refresh it again. So it should not take more than two minutes. It should not take more than two because 1.6 CB, it's taken 2.2 minutes. Now it's a 666 MB file, right? So like less than two minutes. So now one minute, 16 seconds. So lesser time compared to previous lesser time. Why? Because of lesser size. If data size is less, it will take a lesser time, the same bandwidth, same bandwidth. Maybe some scenarios, the bandwidth will vary, means maybe sometime better bandwidth, sometimes a lower bandwidth. Now, so now two files are copied. Now we'll go and select another file, third file. We'll select the data set, open the data set and open the file. And now we'll select a 7-zip file, which is around 3, uh, 50, 340 MB data file will run this one as well. Now I'm going to run with the same copy activity in binary format with a lesser file size. So same data, just a compressed 7 GIF compression and uh, how much time it will take. It should not take more than one minute because the size is less now. So let's refresh. It should take less than one minute. It should take less than one minute. Let's refresh one more time. We are in progress. I'll refresh it again. It should not take more than one minute because the file size is less. Same network, maybe 110, 120 bandwidth is going on now. Let's refresh in progress. 40 seconds. It should not take more than one minute. Because the file size is less now. File size is less now. Let's refresh. Completed. Just go, go to the details. You can verify the how much time it is taken. You can see this. The time is reduced now. So we started with the 1.6 GB, then uh, 666 MB, then 300 plus MB. So total you can see 400 MB. Here 400 MB. So bandwidth 
and data size is very important when we are migrating data over the network and remember our side what we can do as a developer if you have a huge data file like 100 mb sorry 100 gb 200 gb 500 gb 1000 gb data files don't go with a single data file split one file into multiple files have uh, did one video on how to split one file into multiple files you can go through that video then anyway network and cpu capacity that is not in our hand that always depends on organization uh, infrastructure team so as a developer we can uh, go and uh, reduce the file size and we can go with the multiple files if you reduce the file size obviously it will take a lesser time because we can uh, go and do the compressions then if you go with the multiple files what will happen multiple cpus we can utilize one file one cpu multiple files multiple cpus we can utilize so this way which we can transfer files from on premises to cloud using self-hosted integration runtime with a binary format and then with the compression so i have copied all these three files now we can find these three files in my data lake gen so this is about how to migrate on-premises files from on-premises to Azure Data Lake Gen2 using Azure Data Factory, self-hosted integration runtime, binary format and compression. So if you like this video, please share this video and if not subscribe, subscribe my channel. See you in another video. Have a good day. Thank you.